If your application contains multiple forms, creating all of them manually is going to be a huge task. In this video, I'll show you how you can create reusable form component and build out your forms just by using JSON. Let's check it out. Before we start building out our reusable component, let's try to put together a basic form. I'll call it a job application form. And in this form, I'm just going to render one input field. And that input field will be of type text and I'll give it a name of first name. I'll provide it a ID of first name and I'll add a label to render my input element. I'll give it the ID first name and I'll call it first name. To submit this form, I'll get a button, give it submit. I'll add a type of submit and give it a class name of button. Let's head over to browser and let's see if it works. You can see I have my first name and submit. In order to manage this form, I'm going to use a library called react hook form. I'll be importing a hook called use form from react hook form. This hook provides me a couple of methods in order to handle my entire form submission. The first one is register. If you want react hook form to manage your uncontrolled component, you need to register your uncontrolled components. The way you do it is by creating a ref and adding a register. To handle my form submissions, I'll get handle submit from my use form. To my on submit property of my form, I'll provide this handle submit. Now let's create an on submit handler. This is just going to take values and for now, I'll be logging these values. And for my handle submit, I'll provide this handler. I'll head over to browser. When I enter my first name, you can see I can render that data. This is how you would normally do it when you are using React hook forms. Now let's see how we can convert this into a reusable component. I have already created this form component. I'll be adding this data inside my form component. First, I'll get my hook library. Now I'll get all the methods from my hook. I'll copy this form. I'll replace it over here. And for my on submit, for now, I'll copy this from my component and I'll add it in my reusable component. Now in my job form component, I'll be importing this reusable form component. Instead of div, I'll just render my reusable form component. When I head over, you can see my form still works. In my reusable form component, as of now, all the data is hard coded. In order to make this a reusable component, I'll have to extract this data and I'll have to provide this in the form of props to my form component. To do this, I'll create a template object and to my template object, I'll provide a title and provide it job application form. Now, apart from my header in my form, I have multiple fields. Let's see how we can add these fields. Now to my field, I have my first name, my titles, I have the type of text and I'll have to bring in all these values using my template. To manage multiple fields, we can create an array. This array will consist an object which will take title, the title of your input, the type, the type of your input and name. You can also add ID, but I can reuse the name for my ID. Now to my form component, I'll provide this template. I'll head over to my reusable form and I'll have to use this template. First, in order to render these fields, I'll create a method called render fields. Before we do any of that, let's import our template object from my props. From my template object, let's bring in all the fields that we have added. It is going to be title and fields. So I'll get those values, title and fields. Now, instead of my hard coded title, I'll just provide title. To my render fields, I'll provide fields. Let's create this method called render fields. I'll give it const render fields. It will take fields. And we will have to render out this input based on the fields that we are receiving. The way I can do this is by iterating through each of my field component, check the type of my component and render out that field. Here's how you can do it. Now we'll have to return something similar to this one. 
I'll have to get out my first names. I'll have to get out my types, names, IDs. I'll have to get out all these details from my field component. I'll iterate over my fields using map. And for each of my field, I'll extract those values. Now remember, we have added title type and name to my field. So let's get those values. Title, type and name. And I'll be returning my input component. Instead of these hard-coded values, I'll just provide the name, title and for type. For now, I'm going to retain this as text. I'll provide a name and for ID, I'll use the same name property. Now, because we are iterating over an array, I'll have to provide a key for React to uniquely identify the list item. I'll provide it the name property. So we have defined a title and in my fields, I have created a field object. I gave it title type and name and I have provided that to my reusable form. If I head over to my browser, you can see it still works. If I want to add a new field, all I have to do is follow the same format, title type and name. Just replace title with second name and name with second name. When you hit on save, you can see that field is getting rendered. And even when I submit it, I can get that data. So just by manipulating your JSON, you are able to create your input fields. Let's see how we can handle submissions. As of now, the submission is inside my reusable form. We want it within our component, our job form component. So let's copy our on submit over here and provide a new property to my form, call it on submit. Inside my reusable form, I'll get this property on submit and to my handle submit, I'm already calling my on submit. So when I enter my test data, I can access that data within my job form component. Now let's add another field. I'm going to call it email. I'll give it type of email and name email. When I enter my test data and submit, I can still submit that. I'm not doing any email validation. The reason is for every type, I'm returning type as text. So we'll have to change this. Your form contains multiple type of inputs, text fields, checkboxes, radio buttons. The best way to handle all these different inputs is by using a switch. I'll provide a switch statement, provide it type. Now inside my switch statement, I can render out these particular elements. For text, I'm going to return my input text element. Similarly, for my email, I'll create a new statement and instead of type text, I'll return type email. Now let's get a default type. If none of our types matches from the JSON, I'll render out a component and I'm going to call it invalid field. Let's head over to browser and let's see if our email validation works. When I enter test, it tells me that I'll have to enter valid email. This is how you can render different input elements. Now, if I provide an invalid element, it is going to say invalid field. Also, let's not forget to my default object. Let's add my key property. Let's see how we can add required field validations to my form. As of now, I can submit my form. There are no required field validators. To add this, the way you do it in React hook forms is by using your register method. Inside your register, you will be providing a required attribute and you'll be providing a message. But we have to do this dynamically using our JSON. So instead of defining it over here, we'll try to define it in our JSON or in our object. So to my object, I'll add a property called validation props. To this validation props, I'll add a property called required. And for my required, I'll add a custom error message, call it first name is mandatory. I'm going to save it. And I'll extract this validation props from my field object. For my register, I'll add this validation props. That's it.
Now, when I head over to my browser, when I try to submit, my form is not submitted, but it also doesn't show me any error. Let's fix that. I'll extract errors from my used form. In order to render out my error, I'll have to check errors of my name. If that exists, I'll render out an error message and I'll access it from my errors of name of message. Similarly, I'll add it for all my other statements. Now when I submit, you can see I get that error message. This is how you can add validations for your properties. If you want to add for another property, all you have to do is just change the message. Now when you try to submit your form, you can see custom error messages for your field. Now let's check out another type of custom validation. When I enter admin as my first name, I'll have to render out a message saying I cannot use that first name. In order to do this, I'll have to watch for the changes of my first name property. To do that, I'll extract watch from my use form. I'll declare a variable called watch values and to my watch, I'll have to provide an array of fields that I'll have to watch. In our case, it's first name, but because this is a reusable component, we cannot hard code this over here. Instead, we will have to provide it from our job form component. You can add that to your template object, but I feel using it as a property to your form would be much easier. So I'm going to add a new property, call it watch fields and to my watch fields, I'll provide first name. I'll head over to my form component and I'll get this watch fields. Now to my watch method, I'll just provide this watch fields. Let's try to log my watch values and let's see if this works. You can see it renders for the first time. Now every time I make changes to my first name, I can log that data. We can use this data in order to perform our validations. To perform this validation, I'll create a function called validate. And I'll provide this validation function to my form. I'll call it validate and I'll provide this function validate. I'll head over to my form. I'll get this validate property and I'll call this validate with my watch values. So every time your form renders, your validate function will be called. This is going to provide me with watch values. For now, I'm going to log these watch values and check if this works. You can see from my job form component, I'm having access to my first name. Every time I make changes to my first name, I get those values. This is a place where you would want to manually set error based on your validations. In order to manually set your errors, we can use set error and clear errors from your use form. And to my validate function, I'll be providing these error handlers. Errors, set error and clear errors. I'll head over to validate. I'll call this error methods and I'll extract these error handlers errors, set error and clear errors. Now to perform my admin validation, I'm going to access my watch values. I'm going to check the first name in my watch values. If that equals admin, I can set an error. I'll call it first name. I'll have to give it a type of manual and provide it a custom error message. I'll call it message and I'll provide a message. You cannot use this. This is how you'll have to do if you are using React Hook Forms. Whenever I enter test, nothing happens, but whenever I type in admin, you see I get this error called as infinite rendering. That's because every time you're trying to set an error, your component will be rendered and your watch values is going to be triggered again. And this goes on in an infinite loop. So to check that, I'll just have to check if my first name error is already set. If it is not set, only then I'll be calling this method set error. Let's give it a save and let's check if this works. When I type in test, nothing happens. When I type in admin, you can see my custom message. You cannot use this first name. This is how you can add custom validations to your form. Now we'll also have to clear out this error 
to do that i'll once again access my errors of first name i'll check if this first name exists and i'll also have to check if this errors is of type manual because your browser has certain inbuilt validations now only then i'll clear my errors so whenever i type in admin i'll get that error whenever i remove that that error disappears this is how you can add custom validations to your reusable form now let's see how we can dynamically render form fields to do this i'll create two input fields first one i'm going to call it include portfolio give it a type of checkbox and give it a name include underscore portfolio and the next one is going to be your url i'll call it portfolio link give it a type of url and for the name i'll give portfolio underscore link now when i save this i'll get invalid fields because i'll have to define these elements i'll head over to my switch statement i'll add a new type i'll call it checkbox and i'll return a new input checkbox element to do this i'll create a div give it a key of name and inside my div i'll add a label inside label i'll add an input give it type of checkbox give it a name the id give it a ref call ref with my validate props and i'll render out the title of my checkbox and my error messages now i can see i have my checkbox similarly i'll add for my url section i'll copy this email and instead of email i'll just replace that to my url now i have my checkbox and my url field now only when I check this include portfolio, I'll have to render out this URL field. Let's see how we can do that. Now to make this reusable, I'll have to add this to my object. I'll create a new property called dynamic. I will give it a field and provide the field that I want to watch, which is include portfolio and provide the value that I want, which is true. Now to watch changes of my checkbox i'll add that to my watch fields now i should be having access to that property whenever its value changes now let's extract the dynamic property that we have declared i'll create a new variable call it show field and i'll check if dynamic property is present on my field if it is present then i'll check for field and value the field that I want to check is captured in my watch values. So I'll grab my watch values of my field. The field value is declared in my dynamic object. So I'll call dynamic of field. This is going to provide me the value of that checkbox. And I'll compare that with the value that I have provided in my object. Now only when there is a match then I'll return a true. If dynamic property is not added to your object, I'll just return true. Now I'll check for the show field only if it is true. I'll render else I'll just return it. Now once again to reiterate, all that we are doing is we are checking my include portfolio. Only if that value is true, I'm going to render out a true for my show field. Let's head over to browser and you see by default it doesn't appear but when I click on the checkbox only then it appears. This is how I can dynamically render fields in my form. Now if you take a look at the code, this whole thing is reusable. I can create a new form component, provide it a completely different template and I'll be having a working form. So we were able to create a form with validations and dynamic field rendering just by using our JSON object. This is extremely powerful. I can just change my template object and I can render out a completely different form. This is one such way of creating reusable components. You can use the same strategies in order to create a component that will fit your needs. This is the end of React Form series. I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know how you felt about this series. 
if you like this content and if you are looking for more consider subscribing to this channel and as always thanks for watching